Hi, I'm Karen Rice and welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be painting a step-by-step -step watercolour tutorial of some beautiful sunlit trees using just two colours. I'm going to be using lots of wonderful techniques and here are all my materials and for a full list of these, please see in the description below. To get to the description, just click show more or the down arrow on the right hand side. Hopefully these photographs will help you to get to the description. We'll also have links to my Amazon page if you'd like to purchase any of these materials. So let's get started. I'm using Masking Fluid by PBO and I have spattered this with my palette knife onto my watercolour paper. I'm only using two colours, Cadmium Yellow and Payne's Grey to keep the painting really nice and simple. Once your masking fluid has dried, mix up some Payne's Grey on its own and some Cadmium Yellow with a touch of Payne's Grey so you've got a dark and a mid green. I'm using a large brush now and I'm gonna wet my paper here and there. I've got an exciting technique for you here, just dropping in colours. It's really wonderful, it's very, very loose. Try to avoid wetting any of the very light areas. Once you've wet your paper, I'm just getting a little bit of the yellow on its own because there's some real light here on the horizon area and I'm just dropping in some yellow, then a very, very light green. Wet on dry using this size 14, black velvet brush by Silver Brushes and a link for this brush will be in the description below. Now I'm using this yellow with a touch of Payne's Grey and dripping it in with this large brush. It carries lots and lots of paint so you can, it really allows you to drip in all this lovely wet paint. So as you saw there, I painted in the Payne's Grey on its own. I've really gone very, very bold with my darks because if you look at the reference photograph, it's all about dark and light. I took this photograph myself um, near where I live and I just, I was taken by the sunlight coming through those trees and I wanted to actually get that across in the painting. So I'm being very extreme here. I'm just giving the painting a little tilt now and letting things all run. I'm using my twig now just to get some lovely yummy effects where the trees are to show all the sort of foliage and little branches and twigs and just getting these really random abstract effects. I'm using my large size 14 brush now, clean brush, and I'm just softening some of the edges here so you get this beautiful diffused light where the sun's coming through the trees. And while the paper's damp, I'm gonna sprinkle some sea salt here and there in the foreground to create some lovely textures. I've just mixed up a mid-green, that's the Payne's Grey and the yellow. It's so much fun just using these two colors, this limited palette, so that you don't have to worry about the color mixing. And I'm painting this creamy color damp into wet, just dropping that color in to create this lovely foliage and the darks and the lights. Use the tip of the brush and drop the paint in and just see what happens. It's such fun to do. Try to make sure to leave lots of light. Don't get too carried away and make sure the paint's quite creamy. If it's watery, it will dilute too much and it will all look one colour. using the size 4 brush and I'm painting in some dark on the tree just leaving a little bit of light on the edge and I'm using my twig now just to pull out some of the paint to create lots of texture in the bushes. 
Once your painting is dry, brush off all the salt with a piece of kitchen towel. I'm using the size four brush and I'm using the cadmium yellow with a tiny touch of Payne's Grey. And I'm just painting in that background feel. It's flooded with light and I'm painting this wet on dry and I'm using the large size 14 brush just to dilute away. I'm doing the same on the left hand side and just diluting away just to create some lovely light. I'm using a sponge now, it's a natural sponge. I'm dipping it into water and I'm gonna wring out all the water so it's damp and I'm gonna sponge in some dark green on the foliage of the trees and the bushes. You can paint the wash onto the sponge or you can dip the sponge in, whatever suits you. Try to press very gently, don't press too hard. The softer you press, the better the texture. I'm just mixing up some Payne's Grey, it's quite a creamy wash and I want to paint some branches in with my size 4 brush. It's got a beautiful point and I can really manage to get some lovely soft delicate branches. Painting this wet on dry so take your time. Now I've swapped to my twig, just an ordinary twig from the garden. I'm putting the wash on the twig and I'm painting in smaller branches. It gives you a lovely fine line and there's a real feeling of security when you're using a twig. You know, you don't mind, you kind of free up a little bit more. I think you'll really enjoy having a go at that technique. All you have to do is put your twig in a pencil sharpener and sharpen it so you get a nice point. I'm also going to use my size 4 brush to put the rest of the branches in. The painting is dry and I'm removing the masking fluid. I'm using my framing tape but masking tape will be fine as well. I find it just a little bit tidier. It takes off the masking fluid really well. Use it the sticky side down and use it flat to the paper and pull off. It's just like a rubber and it tidies up all the mess as well. I'm using a lighter green wash now. That's the cadmium yellow with a touch of the Payne's Grey quite creamy and I'm just sponging on some quite light foliage now. Remember to press really gently. I'm using my size 4 brush and I'm using just Payne's Grey. This is wet on dry and I'm just going to paint in the fence and the gate. When you're painting the thin lines, take your time. Even use the twig if you feel more secure. I'm using my plastic card, that's just an ordinary store card cut up. I'm using white paint and I'm printing it on the top of those thin lines to look like the light is coming from above. I'm just going to give a little spatter just around the gate here. I felt I need a little bit more light here and there. Really load your brush with dilute paint to get the best out of spattering. And here the painting is with the framing tape removed. It gives me time to assess the painting to see if I need to do any more little details. I decided to use the brush and paint some more highlights on the top of the fence and the gate. If you would like to see a longer, more informative video on this tutorial, why not think about joining my channel membership? Details about the membership will be in the description below. If you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. I think I'll leave the painting there for now. I really hope you've enjoyed it and learned about all the darks and lights, just using that limited palette and creating all that lovely texture. If you would like to see more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you have any comments or questions, please put them in the comments section below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.